it is doing it, she's going to now select the region of interest on your face, uh, right here near the scalp, and uh, you know, there are facial arteries, facial veins, and all, so we're going to get the blood pool, you know, information. The blood pool. Yeah, using the reflected signal. All right. <laughs> and be still. Be still. Yeah. yeah, that's one requirement because we don't have the motion compensation. Can you tell me to turn my head to left and cough on the <laughs> for now, <laughs> just for this demo, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then she selected the region of interest for heart rate. She is selecting the region of interest for respiration rate. Um, if you don't move, we'll give you the right numbers. Otherwise, uh, it won't be accurate. So yeah. now it's going to start giving the numbers. You can see uh, within 15 seconds we get the numbers. Um, the heart rate is displayed right on the top. If you want to really confirm that, yeah. it's pretty good. You are very healthy. <laughs> so 62, uh, these are actually uh, photoplethysmographic signals. They are coming from the you know the pulsation uh, of uh, uh, arteries and, uh, and a little bit of veins. Um, yeah. Did you move? And by the way, we beat the iPad. Yeah, if you move, if you move, then it will be. Yeah, because we are working on the compensation, motion compensation. Uh, the way we want to see this going is, you know, you can be moving your arm, doesn't matter, but we still capture the light and give you the physiological information. So, uh, here you have the respiration rate of what 22 cycles per minute. Now we don't have the ground for, to show that. Um, yeah. But we can we, show you the um, pulse rate. Your pulse rate, uh, but this takes some time before the numbers come out accurate. So, uh, but I think it's more like more positive. Okay. So that's it. So it showed seventy-four. Yeah. Well, it, it's not exactly the same. I know if you if you measure it at different instances, heart rate changes. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. All right, that's one demo, and we want to show you another demo. Well, what else can we do with these cameras? Uh, there, there are a number of things, but uh, for now, uh, I want to show you uh, how much of uh, uh, air you are breathing you know, during normal breathing. Uh, this is called tidal volume. So I'm going to show you how we can get the tidal volume uh, from people without uh, contacts again. So we have a Kinect system here. Uh, this is the you know, state point of South Xbox, basically Kinect. And uh, I'll, so now I'll, I'll sit here, and uh, what Suri is going to do is basically project the, uh, the dot pattern on me. It's invisible. And we're going to calculate uh, the volume, the volumetric change that's going on here. And that will be projected on the screen. As I breathe, there is change in volume. And, so, and we calibrate that signal to, uh, to actual uh, volume, uh, which is not done at the moment, but we're going to show you just how uh, the signals change as I breathe. Using this, we are also calculating the respiration rate to see the rate that is going. So this is the inhale and exhale. Uh, as as case, uh, inhaling, the volumetric information you can see in the first plot and the second plot shows the respiration rate for breathing. Then we can ask LK to take deep breaths. Yeah, deep breath it will change. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the, that one is a depth map. Um, so what we really do is we calculate. How, you know, how much change is there uh, you know, from this surface to the, to the surface we have captured with those dots. Yeah, so we're so using that whiteboard as our reference to calculate the depth. Yeah. So can you change it back? Yeah, I want to just... Yeah, oh, I'm seeing the okay. <laughs> I, I just want to point out that uh, not just the tidal volume, we can get vital capacity, we can get uh, minute volume, you know, so variety of uh, information related to the pulmonary volumes. So uh, that we, we're going to implement those as we move along. Um, and uh, I'm going to switch from here to the last slide. So uh, how come we got interested in this? It turns out that uh, we, uh, I mean, I've worked in color uh, control theory, uh, optics, imaging quite a lot, and a lot of folks in Webster, uh, New York, have done that for printing. You know, we, we built these large-scale high-end printers, and so, many, so much of the technology is inside the box. And it turns out that healthcare could make use of that. So that's how we found, okay, we use this camera, a camera with uh, multiple channels, like multispectral and hyperspectral. Mm -hmm. So we have this wide band of camera systems. Uh, in Webster, we are uh, experimenting with, and we are also working with hospitals in India as well as here in the US 
on patients. So to make this healthcare uh, 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 real, I mean, this kind of systems real and uh, reduce the cost. I think if this comes into the market, then the monitoring becomes much easier. So we get more and more patient data and that can be used for, uh, uh, for diagnosing these or inform the doctors about the individual patient's problems. Okay, thank you.